Hello and welcome to Crumbs of Word Take a Cake. Today we're doing almond and chocolate cake in this tutorial. Here we have a Crumbs of Word almond cake and we won't be needing the top. So I'm just going to cut this off. If you need any of the equipment, I've put links to it in the description. And you could save the top for trifles or any other desserts for later. Now we're going to be turning this cake upside down and using a flat top. So I'm cutting this in half just once this week. I normally cut them in two, as you can see it's just these, these two here. And we're going to be using two of these particular nozzles. Again, the nozzles will be in links in the description. And we're also using this Tesco white chocolate spread and the chocolate caramel spread, from both from Tesco. It's going to be very, very simple cake this week. No buttercream necessary. So the first thing I do is get one spread. This is a white chocolate spread and put it in one of the piping bags. And you need probably half a jar for this cake. And then we're going to be taking the chocolate caramel spread and just scooping it as it is into the other piping bag with the same nozzle. So I'm just going to leave those there. Next thing you do, take the top bit off your cake and use the bottom section. And I'll just show you again in the middle what we normally do. And it's just, that's it, just a little blob, like a little like the chocolate kisses they're called. So we do this all around the cake, leaving a gap because the end, what we're going to be doing is filling those gaps with the white chocolate. Just create a pattern. It doesn't matter how even or uneven it is. This is a very informal cake that can be done on any professional level or amateur level. And it really is extremely forgiving. All we do is do circles going into the cake, filling it up with the white chocolate and the caramel chocolate as we go. When we've done that, put the top part back on. And now we go to the topping. Just put the cake to one side. You'll need some chocolate, some milk chocolate here. And again, I'll put the quantities in the description and some white chocolate. They both need to be melted. And then you need to, you can spoon them on normally, but I've got these great bottles that I use for piping around the edges of the cake. So we're going to make a sort of drip cake, which are so easy to do. Normally I would use a ganache or something like chocolate melts, but today we're using normal chocolate, so it's going to be a little thicker than normal. Now I've just put a lot of chocolate on the top, just squeeze it out, and now I'm just going to smooth it down just to create a base for the effect we're going to be having on the top. Just smooth it down. It doesn't need to be neat. And I think we need to just go a little bit around the edges but not too much because we don't want to do the drips just yet. We just want to go to the edge of the cake and get a nice flat surface of milk chocolate. So smooth that down. If you do go over the edge, it is not a problem. As I said, this is a very easy cake to do. It is very forgiving like all the other tutorials. So now what we need to do is put some little blobs on the edge of the cake. With ganache, you'd do it in a slightly different way, but because chocolate is thicker, you need to do it like a blob. And I'm just doing a couple of blobs here just to give you an example. And then you get a knife, and then as you smooth it around the cake, the blobs just all drip off around the edges. So that's how we start to get the drips. But because chocolate is thicker than a ganache or a candy melt, we might have to go over some of the lumps to make some of the drips a little lower than normal. Basically just carry this on all around the cake until you have the drips there. Just go over with the knife, get those drips going before you go around to the next side. And now you've done that, flatten it out. Oh, just add a little bit more chocolate to ones that you think need a little bit more help. And then you flatten it out and they will start to drip down the sides by themselves. Just smooth it over. Now we take the white chocolate. We're going to be doing circles 
and it doesn't matter how neat or messy they are because we're going to be doing a pattern with them. So this is coming out in a very squiggly pattern. That is absolutely fine. I'm just doing a little extra circle on the edge. As I said, it really, you don't have to have a steady hand. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is a forgiving cake. The effect we're going to do totally makes up for everything. As you can see, you get a toothpick. Just move the toothpick from the outer edge into the center and you get this beautiful pattern which just hides every squiggle and problem that you've had there. Just keep going all the way around with the toothpick, dragging in, wipe it on a tissue if it gets too clogged or you find the pattern starting to smudge and just keep going all the way around to get this beautiful pattern. When you've finished, we're going to be using Tesco roasted chopped hazelnuts. Um, I will give you the quantity of the bag in the description, but it is totally up to you how much you want. You can do light sprinkle like this, just so it's got a few little dots around there really showing the pattern. Or I really do love these things, so I'm going to be very, very generous. Probably cover up most of the pattern, but you can still see it. But it gives a really lovely crunch on the top when the chocolate set. I'm just going to keep sprinkling all around these chopped hazelnuts. You can just be as generous as you want. It is a personal preference. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.